Wooden Railway Edward Presents, Thomas and Friends, Stories of Sodor, Episode 2, No Vain James. It was a busy day on the island of Sodor, but all the engines were still cheerful. That is, except for James. He was still sore with Thomas after the accident they had had a few days prior. In fact, he was rude to every engine he talked to and didn't trust anyone. This is too much work, complained James. Sometimes it's hard for us too, but do you see us whining about it? Henry said in a calm but stern voice. James promptly rolled his eyes at Henry's remark. Huh, he wished. You know, James, people might like you better if you weren't so rude. And so, hmm, well, vain. Oh, please, James quipped as he thought back to some of the times Henry was talking about. Like the time he ran Toby off the rails. Watch out, you old relic. That outdated crate you're always tonguing around is blocking my way. Too late. Oh, James. Or the time he had a mishap at the dock. Salty, where's my train? Call your firebox, me hearty. The sea air's not helping you today. Save it, you two. Do you know how hard it is to work with you little mites blabbering on down there? I thought so. You don't know what it's like. Ugh. You two are unbearable. I'm out of here. Hey, James, stop! Whoops. James mumbled to himself. Well, he shouldn't have taken so long loading my cars. Henry finally gave up. He decided to tease James. If he won't take my advice, then fine, thought Henry to himself. I'll have some fun. Well, James, started Henry, maybe if you were more responsible, Sir Topham Hatt would promote you to be his number one engine. And with that, Henry departed to continue on with his work. James knew that Henry was probably not being serious, but something still nagged him. He then thought to himself, Maybe if I work really hard, Sir Topham Hatt might bestow upon me the title of number one, or at very least give me Gordon's number four spot. I'd look splendid pulling the express. Really reliable, that's me, said James. He had become conceited. Yes, I will be responsible for a while. And he then connected to his freight train without any fuss. <laughs> What's gotten into you, James? I can't remember the last time you didn't argue about pulling dirty trucks, questioned his driver. Oh, you know, just trying to be a better engine, responded James, as he tried not to squirm. <laughs> well, I can live with that, laughed James's driver. James joined in in the laughter. I've already got someone on my side, he whispered to himself. One in the headlamp rolled square wheels. Have a nice day, everyone, chirped James as he rushed out of the yard, and he went down the line joyfully humming to himself. That has to be the most annoying song I've ever heard. Figures James created it. He never learns, concluded Henry. Hey, you workmen over there, don't even think about dancing to that vain engine's incessant ditty, Henry commanded. Who even juggles wrenches? On his journey to his destination, James enthusiastically greeted everyone he passed by. He came upon Arthur, who was resting underneath the viaduct. Oh, hello, Arthur. How are you doing today? I see your red paint is sparkling. Well, you know, us red engines have to keep up our appearances. I'd love to stay and chat, but important business. I have to go. A sophisticated engine like yourself would understand. Ta-ta, until we meet again. Arthur was speechless. Ugh, was that a dream? He asked himself. James has never talked to me in his life. Ugh, I better get back to my rest before I have to go work. <sighs> James then passed Isabella. Hello, Elizabeth. Er, uh, I mean, Isabella, whistled James. Huh? James? She said, startled. 
she took her eyes off the road and crashed into her bridge support. Oh, silly Stim is, she muttered. James was enjoying himself tremendously and soon approached the works. He reversed positions and backed into a siding beside Donald. Hello, James. Have you brought us supplies yet? asked Donald. Of course, Donald. It's right here, gushed James. Donald raised his eyebrows at Toby, who was being serviced, but James kept going. What the three engines did not notice was a diesel lurking in the shadows. Diesel was not phased by James. Look who's acting up now, Diesel snarled in an oily voice. <laughs> the fat controller won't want James after he gets in some trouble. And with that, Diesel slinked away to enact his devious plan. Meanwhile, James was being as polite as ever. Thank you, everyone, for your hospitality. Hopefully I'll catch you later. After that, James went on to other work. Hmm. Diesel was also going off to do work, but much more sinister work at that. Diesel found some old trucks in a siding and placed them on an intersect. He then went to the viaduct which led to the crossing. Since there was a switch, Diesel used the remaining trucks to block one line. James was in the distance, so Diesel moved out of the way and hid. James did not see the danger and kept right on going. What is it, nine in the headlamp? In no time, that number one will be painted on my beautiful, red, shiny tender, James excitedly said to himself. What he and his driver had failed to notice is that the switch was not set for the clear line. Oh no! wailed James as his buffer smashed into the trucks ahead. His crew jumped out just in time. Diesel, who had realized his plan had terribly backfired, tried to flee the scene. He reversed too quickly, though, and also derailed himself. This caused James and the trucks to both derail, and he was left dangling in the air for a few moments before he tumbled to the ground. James came down on the trucks and Diesel. After dealing with a few other matters, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the crash site. Both James and Diesel were propped up on flatbeds and were told off by the fat controller. James, what is the meaning of this? questioned Sir Topham Hatt. Uh, well, um, you know, actually, uh, I stammered James. If I may interject. Sir, smirk Diesel. James was trying to be number one and was planning to trick everyone. I learned this and was just about to come tell you when he, James took me out. Uh, thank you for your input, Diesel. No, James, is this statement true? Diesel was pleased. He had gotten his way and James was in grave trouble. James was silent for a couple of moments. The first part was true, sir, but I didn't mean to crash. What no one had realized is that Edward had been following Diesel throughout the day. He came out of the background and told Sir Topham Hatt everything. Oh dear, I can't believe this, just when I think I can trust you. Your behavior is unacceptable, he yelled. But sir, really quiet! snapped Sir Topham Hatt. I ought to punish you. How about I send you to the Little Western? They need the help and Duck could teach you about the trucks. Oh no, please sir, anything but that, pleaded Diesel. You're right, very unrealistic indeed. I will just shut you up in the shed for a few weeks, said Sir Topham Hatt. <sighs> Growled Diesel. Enough! Now be off with you snapped Sir Topham Hatt. Afterward, he apologized to James. I'm very sorry for falsely accusing you, James, said Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, it's okay, sir, 
I wasn't the best today anyway, answered James. As James went to be fixed, Diesel sulked in the shed. After night had fallen, he sneaked away. and crossed Vickerstown Bridge to the other railway. He wanted to have a talk with someone very important. Uh.